So like when you when you've had it in you know because you kind of put a lot of your life out there. So one of the questions I've got them in a random order, so we'll just kind of bounce around. But like you put a lot of your life out there for uh-huh. people to see and speak about. Why did you decide to do that in the beginning? And have you ever regretted that, or do you think there's a benefit to putting a personal life out there? Um, I mean, initially, my thought was that like um, I'm a pretty open person, and nothing really embarrasses me, so I don't care. Um, yeah. And then it's time. Ta- oh, okay. I was just gonna say, is that always been the case? Yeah, I don't know why. I'm just it's just kind of the person I am. I just don't care much um, about like uh, I'm a pretty like internally driven person. Like, it's mm. not much to embarrass me. Like, as long as I feel pretty comfortable with myself, I don't really care much what other people think. Um, in terms of how it's worked retrospectively, I think it's probably gone pretty good. There's like a, there's pros and there's cons to revealing a lot about yourself. You know, on one end, obviously people can attack you with a lot, but on another end, it um, people get to see a lot and they get more attached, and it makes you seem more authentic. Yeah. Mm. You you kind of have that way of managing it where they might have ammunition, but you do seem to just not really care about it. So if they do attack you on a personal level, it's almost as if it doesn't affect you so much. And maybe people that keep it more private, it affects them more if something comes out. Yeah, I mean, like, it's it's a double-edged sword. Like, because I'm so comfortable having everything out there, it doesn't bother me much. Now, if I was more private, it would probably bother me. But since I'm so comfortable having everything out there, it helps me navigate a lot of really technically, or a lot of complicated, um, like, online situations. Uh, j- just because everything's already out there. This sounds so silly, but it limits the leverage that other people can have over me quite a bit so for instance i just got in a huge fight with like a guy called john zerka and then um an impressionable young adolescent prepubescent teenage boy uh called sneeko and one of the advantages (laughs) that i have is that like both of these guys are obviously they say one thing and they do a lot behind the scenes and both of them will say things like oh like i can leak a lot of stuff about this guy i'm gonna ruin this guy and i was like you can't there's nothing you can say about me because everything about me is public already anyway so it limits people's ability to kind of like threaten me or with me and it gives me the upper hand in a lot of those types of online like back and forth spats this is like drama oriented not like serious political stuff but it just that's a that's a helpful thing i guess is one way to look at it yeah does the drama side ever interfere with people's perspective on your politics so if you're putting forward a point of view and you want people to respect it and understand it does that drama side ever affect that sometimes yeah probably i mean everything is a double-edged sword you know like i catch some people with some content and i probably turn away people with the same content so it's just a matter of balancing like what kind of audience do i want what kind of audience do i not want yeah 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 i think i noticed that the way i'd see it is that yeah i think you putting all that sort of stuff out there makes me trust your what you say more it doesn't really it it just sort of makes me think you're a truthful person so you tell the truth about things whereas that is the main gripe i have about a lot of other people Mm -hmm. i don't like the more conservative right-wing side is that yeah, Things like tend I like, to come I mean, out about them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like you know where I stand. Yeah. Like if some people's like, oh, like this guy does open relations. And blah, blah. I was like, okay, sure. But I mean, like, at least you know where <laughs> I stand. Like I don't lie about it. I'm not out here saying like I live one lifestyle and I I do another thing. Or I'm out here saying like, oh, like me and my wife have a perfect relationship. Like yeah, we fight all the time over shit, right? So there's not like anything that yeah. can ever get leaked. Whereas other people will definitely admit, like I do drugs. I I fornicate in an un- or not. I shouldn't say unethically, but like I obviously religious people would have <laughs> gripes with a lot of my lifestyle but um yeah but i'm like i'm really open about it so it limits the amount of exposing you can do about me you know yeah because i mean yeah it's funny all the people that do talk lots about relationship management they tend to be very pri on the right wing sort of red pill side mm-hmm. they tend to be very private about their relationships and then something comes out like the stephen crowder thing or wh- whatever whatever yeah you, know, you can make of it what you will but it's like they they put on this they present their perspectives on relationship and they sound very good sometimes Mm -hmm. then yeah when something comes out it really is more damning whereas a lot of these time a lot of i've noticed is these people put their prescriptions of relationships so they say this is how a relationship should be they'll look at someone like you and they'll say open relationship this means blah 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 blah, that relationship's doomed to fail etc um but then they don't really show the fruits of their ideas so they'll they'll talk about all these relationships they have and how the dynamic is so good and blah 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 mm-hmm. but they'll never really show you that relationship and it makes me always think it's just cap like when i hear uh, john zerka talking about relationships and <laughs> i don't know how much of him is a character and how much of him is a real person but yeah he um yeah it, it, to me it's just like it's really a fun thing to hear you talk about that but i know for a fact that is not how you're gonna ever get married you're never gonna marry someone with mm-hmm. the perspective him sneeko it's people have so yeah yeah i've noticed that yeah yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So I wanted to get into. Let me have a look here. Yeah. Is that accurate to say that people on the right 
despite you know differences of opinions those people seem to be able to hold friendships with people they disagree with better than those on the left um you can probably disagree with people opposite mm. but um i don't think that I, I don't think that you can um people on the right hate each other people on the left hate each other <laughs> um but it's yeah, easier yeah. to maintain cross political chasm friendships because you expect people to not like each other like arguably for like me and somebody like Sneeko, um it's easier for us to maintain a sort of friendship because we know there's like a mutual level of like disrespect than it would be for me and like another leftist right now obviously like Sneeko, you can cross boundaries and it goes too far but it's e i think it's easier for people to keep politically differentiated friendships than politically similar ones because the closer you are the more likely you are to like purity test or do crazy shit like that you know that's interesting yeah because i noticed the those guys here definitely like the red pill people they seem to genuinely like you as a person which is i Some just of, i just find uh, it surprising it, that really depends on who you talk to myron i respect as a person because he's despite how much i disagree with all of his lifestyle like he is very professional he is very courteous like he's not going to do weird shit like he's he'll, he's pretty upfront mm. with everything um a lot of the other red pill people are teenage girls like uh rollo MLD, Donovan <laughs> Sharp, Just Pearly thing. So I would say the majority of the Red Pill people probably don't like me right now. I I'm, I do okay, okay in their communities, but I hate most of these f people are children. Uh, and that's one other bit I wanted to talk about. So do you have any opinions on like the wider masculinity type of movement that isn't Red Pill? It's people like, uh, there's a guy called Corey Wayne, a guy called Attachment Allen. These are people they talk about maybe masculinity and femininity as energies. They don't necessarily get so into like men need to be like this, women need to be like this. Talk about it more in maybe a hippie sort of sense of like there are these two energies that people, uh, you know, resonate with, and they sort of teach what masculinity means to them and stuff like that. Do you do you look into that sort of stuff? Have you ever read? Like no, usually as soon as anybody's talking about masculinity, I start cringing. Um, but I mean, there might be good guys out there. Just most of it is just like so like. I don't want to use the soy shit and say like toxic, but like most of it is toxic. Most of it is like a really poor understanding of like what masculinity is. Um, it's kind of funny, and I don't know if they're changing their stuff or maybe I just listen a little bit more closely. Uh, Tristan Tate just had a debate with um, some vegan guy yesterday, and he summarized some of it too, where it's like the idea like men eat meat and blah blah blah, and it's like this is masculine. Like a lot of it is just like cringe and stupid. I think men need to be ready to kill invaders. Like this is just dumb shit that doesn't apply to like 99% of people's lives 99% of the time, you know. I think you'd find quite an interesting book called the, the Way of the Superior Man. It's not really any of that sort of stuff. It's more just about um, maintaining, uh, it's maintaining like polarity in a relationship, but not in the kind of red pill. You need to be submitted to me. It's not that kind of angle. I'd be curious to hear you talk about that because I've, that's the one area I don't feel that you touch. You've got the red pill and then you've got like the soy takes, but there is a middle ground where people kind of talk about masculinity and femininity and maybe a modern sense. Maybe, I'm yeah. I'm curious yeah. Yeah, be I don't know how to like actually change people's behaviors, and so much of that for me is so much like a, um, it's so much like a vibe or a feeling. Like I can usually figure out like how confident or masculine or whatever a person will be probably talking that for like thirty seconds. There's just a way that people carry themselves, and I don't know how to like tell people to change that. Like it's hard to imagine. Yeah. Like if I start chatting with a dude and he's like, "Hey, my name is blah blah," um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what's I am I should, I'm even making fun of the voice, but it's not even really the voice. It's hard to communicate. There's just some people that you can just tell immediately, and I don't know how to change or whatever. That's why I typically I don't venture into those fields um, because I don't yeah. I don't even know what like advice I would give to like how do you like reform yourself as a person. I know it's not by obsessing over what is masculine or feminine. Like I know that, yeah. but uh, I, yeah, I don't know what the advice would be. I'm not sure. Yeah, they, that's the thing. I think the red pill gets really f wrong where it's like masculinity embrace. If you look at like the yin and yang symbol, it's like, you know, the masculine and the feminine together. And it talks about how masculinity has femininity in it. And I've noticed the red pill have started doing this thing where they're now scared of displaying any feminine traits, even though it's totally normal to have feminine traits, to the point that some of them talk about you shouldn't like music. I think I saw Tristan Tate say, I don't like music. Or um, people like, I think Sneeko talks about not liking dancing and stuff like that. And it's, it's a really bizarre attitude and it's so incorrect. I don't know how that's become the norm i think yeah it's just it's it. cringe that's yeah it's just cringe. It's weird as yeah it's weird as yeah. I, i'm sort of trying to work out where your your biggest impact moments were like I, i've got my opinions on it but i was just just kind of trying to hear what you think i mean probably the recent red pill stuff has been my biggest impact like um yeah yeah, yeah i'm glad you did that you you pulled me back on a few of them like uh um, <laughs> okay that's good yeah 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 i mean it was it's one of them ones where i've always kind of you know, been interested in like going to the gym and stuff and so naturally you start seeing 
that that messaging growing it in that community and you just sort of take it as given you're like okay maybe this is how we're talking now but then uh yeah you come along and just i think when they sort of present a factual argument and there's no counter argument to it you just kind of take it as given but i think you've done a lot of work in that and sort of destroying that kind of red pill movement oh uh, yeah and they do a lot of work themselves destroying themselves so yeah yeah for sure mm -hmm. do you think that's going to be dead in like two years or do you think it's going to there will always be something there um, yeah, I think so. I think within a year or two, I think it'll be pretty dead, yeah. But, I mean, we'll see, yeah. I guess, yeah. I appreciate that, Destiny. Alright, bye. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed.